Hello and welcome to First Geek 411's book club. Um, we are excited to have you all with us tonight. Um, remember, you can find us on all the social medias as One Geek 411, chat with us on our Discord server, or email us at 1stgeek411 at gmail.com. Check out the show notes on our website, onegeek411.com and watch our show live on Twitch every Monday night at 6.45 Mountain Time. And you can also find us on YouTube after. Rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, I'm Shanine, and with me, I have Cameron. Hello. Hello, and Chris. Oi. And Emma. Hi. Hello, all right. Tonight, we are talking about Advent, A Thread in the Night by E.M. Welcher. Um, this is, in fact, an Advent book. It has 24 days of reflections to take you from December 1st to 24th, leading up to Christmas. And it is not your usual lighthearted Christmas preparation book. Um, no. Oh boy, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Definitely geez. not. Definitely not what Felt... I was expecting. <laughs> it's, like, it's great, but geez, wonderful. Felt more like something meant for Easter. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is what also makes it so great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who haven't read it, as a bit of a primer, these reflections come from Welcher's experience of losing his first wife to cancer. So it is a little bit heavier than your usual Advent book, but it makes space for the pain and suffering while also finding hope in the midst of the darkness, which I think makes it the perfect 2020 Advent book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I will say, I, I think it gets um, really good the like in a theological sense in that way, where like, I think a lot of times we, we talk about that hope of the birth of Christ and forgetting the the years and years of waiting and expectation for the coming Messiah. And, and I thought that that was a re like a really good part of this versus the normal cheery presence. I mean, that isn't kind of that thing. kind of what we mentioned last week when we were talking about, or maybe just yesterday, <laughs> when we know. talked about Sony purchasing um, Pure Flix. Pure Flix. Yeah, and we like what we'd like to see more, and it's more stuff like this, more stuff that's a little more deeper and darker and like deals with the grittiness that is just living while being a Christian. Yes. Um, so after those first impressions, I'll just say that I did purchase my copy. Um but the rest of us received uh, free copies for the review. You can't see anything. <laughs> Just this white glare. Just white glare, <laughs> but it's a PDF. <laughs> um, but I purchased, purchased like... <laughs> I did, because I cannot, like, if you expect me like to it. read something like on it. the computer and, like, process it, I'm not going to process it. So I'm going to print it off to actually like understand what's going on. I 100% did the same thing in college. I get it. Like, small, yeah. With our like printer and balances. Like... It's not that thick. So yeah. it's not like you had to print too many yeah. pages. Yeah. It was only like 63 pages. If it was like 100 plus, I wouldn't have bothered. But... And technically you could always um, just print the pages that for the actual advent portion. Mm -hmm. So that brings it down. To yeah, like... that's, that's basically what I did. Like I don't have the cover or anything it's just yeah yeah i did purchase like seven more copies to give his christmas gifts though so like i feel like that covers us i still have yeah. like a ton of like books from young life left over that were supposed to be always <laughs> meant for gifts but they're just sitting in my garage <laughs> chris not my fault <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit. It's not not your Maybe. Fault. <laughs> I bought too many. I was like, oh, but we can, we, we'll find these. And then, I'm, then I stopped being ill with me. I was like, oh, I'm never going <laughs> to. I was just in my garage. <laughs> never mind. 
<laughs> okay. Um, any more first impressions before we get into it? No. Okay, Jump let's in. get into it. Um, have have we read this author before? No. I had not heard of him. No. <laughs> so I have. Um I started following Evan and his wife Rachel on Twitter. I was trying to think if it was like earlier this year or last year. I don't know. Everything runs together now. But I was on the launch team for Evan's previous book of poetry called Nightscapes, which I also very much recommend. It has, again, some poems about um, his first wife going through cancer and things like that, but also has some poems about like chili and sweaters. <laughs> and Chewbacca, so. <laughs> My kind of poem right there. <laughs> yeah. some, some of the best things in the world right there. <laughs> so, yes, I really, I just love Evan Welcher a lot and his ability to talk about the hard things, but enjoy the goofy, lighthearted things as well. And that comes through in everything of his that I've read. Yeah. Um, have you read any books like this before, whether it be um, poetry, Advent books, other books this reminded you of, topic-wise, or anything like that? I've read books like what I expected this to be. Um, and so, no, I guess is the answer to that question. <laughs> um, um, and we'll, we can kind of get into that a bit more as we go. But um, yeah, I definitely was um, expecting something a bit different um, just based on it being an Advent book. And I've done a little bit of that before, but ne never anything serious. So yeah, it, I mean, yeah. Like I've done devotionals and stuff that like, you know, our day by day kind of reflection piece. But nothing is like intimate and personal as this is. I, I love that. And um, and also not like typically those are still longer. Um, granted, half of the time those other books are just copy and pasting <laughs> scripture, <laughs> being like, "Hey, read yeah. this." It's like, it's yeah. like, we just reordered the Bible for you, so we read this. Book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is on this day, and let's move. And on. told you to read <laughs> it on like, this thanks. day instead of that day. <laughs> it's like I have a Bible. You could just print off one page for a reading list, and I'll be good. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, kind of like I guess both of you have said, it wasn't really what I expected either. Um, I have read some like freeform poetry and things like that in college and Advent um, devotionals and stuff um, that have been enjoyable, but it this definitely, I was expecting it to be a, a, like a very much a formed devotional instead of something that had like poetry involved so it was definitely something different and a nice change of pace yeah um like you all said this book is very different from anything else that i've read before um i've read an advent book that we can talk about later but <laughs> another book that it kind of reminded me of a little bit, not in its form, but in theme, I guess, is No More Faking Fine by Esther Fleece, which is all about lament. And that book was kind of the first that I had really learned about lament. Like, I feel like we hear about it because there's a book called Lamentations <laughs> in the Bible and like, so we're just kind of familiar with the word, but we don't really know what it means or how to do it. So No More Faking Fine was a really good book that I recommend on that topic. And find that. <laughs> um, so what is everyone's favorite or least favorite part or thing about the book? Um, 
I guess for me, if I were to, like, the first season's like Advent, I really enjoy devotional type things. Um, I th- think this would be, if I was looking for a devotional for Advent, I don't think I would necessarily go with this one because of its form. It was enjoyable to read, but leading up to something like Christmas, I would probably look for something that was a little more, not really guided, but um, structured in a way. Uh, um, But this was really, it was a good, what I loved about it was that it was a good and different reflection on Advent than what I'm used to. Because it was very much, it had to feel like something you would read leading up to Easter. Um, But it was all connected to advent and the like season of life essentially so i like that the structure of the book mimics my like my internal monologue (laughs) (laughs) like (laughs) in general like like i i understand it's not for everyone but like he the way he connects his idea where he kind of just jumps it's like here's a little of the personal Here's a very deep thought. <laughs> Here's a scripture it made me think of. And then moving on. And I, I definitely understand like where some people would be like, okay, can you finish <laughs> first <laughs> before we move on? But this is very much how my brain works <laughs> when processing mm-hmm. anything. And I really like that. It made it really easy for me to kind of follow along and also like put myself in that because it because of that personal touch because of that piece it's like i can i can relate closer to the emotions and everything he's trying to portray in in the writing i'll say for me um i think one of the best the the thing it does best is the thing that it also does worst um and it's kind of just that that what are your expectations and so i love the the style of the more free form aspect of it. Um, and I can definitely see that being something that, that people aren't into, but this is, and like, it's, it's very weird when, um, like when I think of like a devotional book, I mean, this is kind of me coming into it of saying like, I expected something different and got something completely different and that's not a bad thing, but like I came in and was like, Oh, there's no th- questions. There's no thoughts. There's no, uh, well, there are thoughts. There's no like, think about this. There's not a, um, there's not that type of devotion that you, you normally see. Um, and I think that's really cool. It, it very much leaves it more up to you as the reader to be thinking about it, to, to as well on it, to, to spend time with it. And I think that that's really cool. But I can definitely see people struggling with that because they want that more structured approach. Um, I pulled up a quote um, that I kind of got thinking about as, um, as we've been talking, and this is from um, Blue Like Jazz. And so this is Donald Miller. And he says, I never really, I never liked jazz, be- uh, jazz music because jazz music doesn't resolve. But I was outside um, a theater in Portland one night and I saw a man playing the saxophone. He stood there for 15 minutes and he never opened his eyes. After that, I liked jazz music. Sometimes you have to watch somebody love something before you can love it yourself. <laughs> um, it is as if they are showing you the way. I used to not like God because God doesn't resolve. Um, but that was before any of this happened. And I think that that kind of really hits on this idea of like, there's not a nice bow on any of this. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think that that's a bad thing. It's something that I really enjoyed about it, but it does make it a little bit um, different than what I think people would expect. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I kind of love the lack of structure about it because other devotionals and Advent books that I've read are usually very structured. Like, here's your Bible scripture. Mm -hmm. Here's the devotional. Here's maybe a thing for you to think about. And somehow having the structure like that makes it really easy to just like get through and move on. Whereas I feel like these kind of more open-ended reflections 
lend themselves more to contemplation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And yeah, I just love the range of emotions that Evan captures throughout the book. And I'll say for us, um, at least, or at least I know for me, I did not read this book as intended. And so, what? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I mean, the, the, um, the day portion. So, um, and that's my bad. Um, <laughs> but that is something that, like, that I feel like I missed out on when I read it is I didn't get to dwell on the thoughts. So I'm actually like, my plan is actually to go back through it for Advent. Um, so that I can actually spend time on each of the days and like spend t more time on the individual thoughts. But um, I, I definitely think there's, there's a lot to that. And it kind of reminds me of like the first time I really got into like deeper Christian living books, like outside of the like, everything's great with the church kind of thing. Um, and actually like listening to people talk about like um, systematic the theology in terms of like actually helping the poor and stuff like that. Um, and it kind of reminded me of reading those books and just being like, I need to stop reading and just think for a bit. Like, that's kind of just where I want to be at more. And so I'm looking forward to going back for for that. Yeah, yeah, I also read it all in one night. So I'm looking forward to actually going through it for Advent. <laughs> I did, yeah. like, I'm not going to say I read a day a day. Um, but what I tried to do because I knew that that was the structure is I tried to read a day and then step away for a little bit. Kind of just to get kind of that emphasis and that's that the idea of the purpose of of the structure. Um, so I would read it and or like or like since because I was doing it while I was working um, in between calls, I'd read a day and then I'd take a few calls and then I'd read the next piece. Um, and so that's kind of what I did too, but right. I, I think it would be interesting or like, and I also, because like there are different links to each of these days. Granted, each day mm -hmm. is very short for the most part, regardless, mm -hmm. but there are some days that you're just going to be like, here's, here's that's two lines. It? Yeah. <laughs> that's Think about it. This all day yeah. long. <laughs> like, yeah. okay. So I really want to know like what that would be like to actually just, approach that day and that's that's what you get yeah i mean i definitely read it all in one sitting yesterday <laughs> and then moved on with my life um and but i would definitely go back and read through it again another time in the context of actually december this time <laughs> So, <laughs> okay. Um, was there anything in the book that surprised you? Besides, besides it being totally not yeah, besides what you expected. everything. <laughs> besides um, <laughs> the yes. the entire thing was yes. unexpected. <laughs> well, on page one. Um, <laughs> but. December um, 1st, oh, in yes. May 2014, my first wife, Daniel, died from lymphoma. Thanks. Okay. Great yeah. start. Great start. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll say overall, I was really surprised by um, how raw it is without, like, necessarily trying to be bogged down, if that makes sense. And, like, I don't necessarily know a better way to say that. But, like, it, it felt like it was somebody, like, being open with their pain um and maybe and not maybe this is me thinking of like speakers that i've heard in the past where like sometimes when you hear a speaker um this is me like live stream of consciousness thinking have not gotten through this yet sorry shanine did not look at the questions ahead of time um <laughs> and it kind of reminds me like sometimes when you're hearing a speaker and their intention is to make you is to, to pull you to whatever level they're on so if they're trying to be super serious they're trying to pull that conversation in that direction um to me this reminded me a lot more of like listening to a friend talk who's going through something who just kind of needs you to empathize like um it, it didn't really give me that impression of like here's all this heavy stuff deal with it with me um it was more of just like hey like you're my friend and i'm going to tell you what's on my heart mm -hmm. and I, I that surprised me and i really enjoyed that yeah 
I agree. It's very open in a not put on kind of way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, overall, for me, it definitely was just a surprise. Just the whole book was a surprise. But in that way, that was very, like like you were saying, Cameron, a friend who's just who just needs to talk. But in a way that was also pleasant, like someone is just talking about whatever is they need to get off their chest. But there's no expectations for you to respond or try to fix the problem for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I was surprised at how hopeful I still felt after reading it because it's a lot of hard and heavy things, mm-hmm. but not, I don't know, not in a way that's like, wow, I can't believe such horrible things happen. But like, yeah, like this is the way that our world is and these things do happen. But Mm -hmm. like, there's also more to it. Yeah. Um, What aspects of the author's story could you most relate to? For me, I guess it's like we've all kind of been there with that person where whatever it is that they're going through is something that you have zero connection with or zero ability to like to like comprehend. Like I can't imagine going through this. Um, and so like, so kind of from that perspective and um, it's kind of just hits you on that. Like you just got to sit here and be like, yeah, that sucks. Like sometimes that's the, that's what people need and that's all you can you can be to, to what Emma said. It's like you're not. This isn't like an expectation to solve the problem for the person. It's just the like, and, and that kind of connected with me. Um, just with um, whether it's like work situations or things like that. Sometimes you just need to like be like, hey, things were awful today. Here's why. Thanks for listening. <laughs> like. I mean, yeah, in general, like, obviously, like, I don't relate to the situation itself much, but definitely, I definitely relate to, as I previously mentioned, his thought structure in processing any deeper emotion or, um, I guess, dark concept, I, um, and just going through that itself. Um, without being too overly analytical of everything you're experiencing um, and just being able to present that or process everything that's going on and on the pages is I I, I think I definitely um, can relate to to just yeah it's just it's just my internal monologue right here it's like this is the most relatable <laughs> writing I've ever seen (laughs) yeah I think for me like I think everyone experiences suffering to some extent in their life so I think there is like with this there is that like obviously his like the suffering from his wife going through cancer treatments is very specific to his family and the like not everyone has gone through cancer treatment or know someone who's gone through cancer treatment like that is a very small percentage of people who are going through that suffering um but it's some kind of suffering like that is just like relatable in the sense of like someone goes through something that's hard or challenging that we did not foresee. And I think that's something that 
at least resonated with me was that it was even though it was his suffering was something that was so unique to him it was still something that I could connect to in a way even though I've never experienced that Mm -hmm. yeah like I've never gone through it with a spouse but I have had loved ones die of cancer and being in the hospital and watching them deteriorate is hard and it's hard to lose someone that you thought you were going to have more time with and so that part I definitely relate to but also just in the grander scheme of things just the pain and the sorrow that he talks about is so relatable like Emma was saying no one goes through life without experiencing pain of some kind and it's healing to experience pain together. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Okay, does anybody have any quotes from the book they'd like to share? I do. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so you mentioned right earlier. Right into it. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned earlier the idea of this being like the Advent book for 2020. Um, and specifically, December 5th hit me right right in the heart. Um, and so, um, so on this, I don't want to read the whole day because I don't want to take away from that, that whole that whole devotion or thought for other people. But um, the beginning, it starts off with one aspect of um, Danielle's suffering was the loneliness of being immunocompromised. Cloud, crowds and germy folks were a real danger, but sometimes the heart yearns for crowds and germy folks. And then skipping um, a little bit, it says, how she missed shopping, merely walking through a crowd without fear. Church is a crowd. Saints are germy folk, um, as is the great congregation. Germy and beloved by God, germy and desperately needed. Like that kind of, as I've said, like on our normal podcast, like as like an extrovert working from home and trying to do my best to make sure I'm like not wearing a mask, not seeing people when it's not necessary. Like, man, I miss being able to see people and doing all that. And so like that, well, I definitely cannot like connect with this quote from an immunocompromised standpoint. I can definitely like that idea and that like loneliness of, not being able to do those normal things definitely hit me as I was reading this. Yeah, that was definitely a a moment that stood out to me too because of COVID. Because this was definitely something that was written before that started, I assume. Um, But what stood out to me as well was um, on for the December 20th day was sometimes some kind of believers will cut you deepest. They're still at it too, from the TV to the redwoods of California. They make enemies of brethren by holding our beloved faithful dead against us. Um, And that stood out to me because it's also like there's COVID happening, but there's also still the people out there who are preaching the gospel but in a way that is more harmful than it is loving mm-hmm. um and in this point he was talking about how like oh your wife is dying of cancer you should pray more pray right pray this way pray that way which wasn't helping the scenario of my wife is dying and i'm holding on to faith in any way that i can um and there's like as Christians were called to love, but there's lots of Christians out there who think they're doing right, but are really just pushing others away. So like, yeah, I mean, so day 20, yeah, that, the, that particular day when he goes into that, like, I just think to those kinds of experiences it's like where there's like you almost you put all your hope and expectation into a, he, a 
a miracle. Mm-hmm. Like whether mm-hmm. that's due to your faith or what that, like, or whichever is like people are saying, oh, there, if you do this right, there will be a miracle. And it's like, what does it, what happens to your faith when there isn't one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the purpose of Jesus isn't necessarily just to perform miracles. The purpose of Jesus was be the epitome of of a loving God that came and sacrificed himself out of love. And so love is always the purpose, not what is going to, what am I going to get out of that as a result? It's not the final des. I mean, it is the final destination, but like, it's not like it's not like we have to wait to receive it we are continuously receiving that love right but for me well like i think he sets it up for like so from day one he does like obviously he sets up this isn't going to be what you're expecting but he does also close day one with what to kind of expect in setting up kind of that hopefulness even out of this despair despairing situation um he writes the darkness the pain and the cold of advent is leading somewhere bright and warm just on the other side of the magic if you stretch your hand out far enough during sleepless phone holding nights you might be able to grasp its warmth hold on and i i like that that's day one especially after like (laughs) just dumping this on you it's like okay (laughs) made me really excited to get through everything else and see where he's where he's ultimately going even if it wasn't what i was expecting so we lost emma oh we did Yep. Give her a sec and see if we can get her back. <laughs> Switching the three person real quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, we so how we doing? <laughs> We're good. We good. We good. <laughs> Gives me a chance to find my next one because I remember. I like I tried to highlight as much, but it's not on. <laughs> okay, we're back. We're back. And she's back. Going back to four person. <laughs> there. I know I, I gotta swap to some move. text. I have so many quotes, but I'll try to just share a couple. It's like every deep thought <laughs> you have is quotable. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Got him. Yep. Um, but kind of going back to that idea of faith, um, I love this quote. Sometimes the boldness of faith means waiting with bated breath, clinging to the word resurrection with your nails and teeth for it is all we ever had. Um, yeah, I love that. Just that having faith isn't always the easiest thing. And sometimes you got to grasp at it for all your worth. And, and it just means waiting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on... On my birthday, <laughs> December 17th, uh, there's a great one. It's a relationship. Um, it's a longer piece. But if you weep amongst the graves, deep into the late watches of the night, the only light you may see are the stars of heaven twinkling with eternal innocence, hinting that a brighter day is waiting with bated breath to dawn. You should be there. And should there be cloud cover, you will need faith. Okay, that's my favorite quote, and I'm upset you took it from me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Because it's on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have started with that one. <laughs> no. 
no but I agree it's so good I love I love the image that it paints and it's good completely agree and and just like just just like it's like seeing is a part of this this scenario unless there's cloud cover in which case that's what faith's for it's like it's like when you can't see the end when you can't see or believe in or like trust and then you just have to trust that that new day that brighter day is coming One of the things, um, it's just after that on December 18th that I thought was, um, like, I guess it, it kind of stood out to me more as like a interesting poetic choice rather than like the specific quote. Um, but I thought this was really cool. So he's, he's talking about, he says, um, he's talking about like sleeping on the porch, um, and dealing with, um, morning neck aches and midnight shivers with a price we pay to stay here in the land of the living. And the sun always rose day after day, a ball of flame burning in the east. Not lo and not long after that, she went home to be with the Lord forever. Um, and I said, I don't want to read the rest. I want people to be able to process some of that um, as they read it on their own. But something that I found really interesting, though, is like getting to this idea of the sun coming up, of warmth, of life. Um, it still doesn't feel joyful. Like, and I think that that's, it was a really interesting, like, like poetic choice um, and that kind of like because that I kind of connected with that more on like that grounds um, and that idea of saying that like sometimes the those normal things don't always feel the same and I, I think on, on like a 20 at 2020 kind of sense we can see that like even those like those bits of joy are not always the same as what they were the times before and so I that said that I thought that was really interesting Yeah, I like the way he describes, like, he also refuses to describe people as, like, perfect. Mm -hmm. Either way, like, in general. Like, even describing his church um, on the 15th, he said, This little white church loves Advent. Sure, they like singing Christmas songs. Uh, sure, they like singing Christmas songs during Advent, and they forget to change the pyramids, and even light the candles out of order. But they love the mystery, holding it with good conscience, even good conscience even and they have seen their fair share of death and they wait for resurrection day i, I just like that he also in a way this kind of pokes on it's like it's like we are going to uh go through this season together as a family even if we're not doing everything right mm -hmm. like sometimes we get like so bogged down by the structure and the correct way that things should be doing and going back to like when people are saying pray right pray better pray more um that it's not always helpful and sometimes you just have to do things your way and enjoy the season that you're in um I just like that. I just love that little description of his church, too. <laughs> Light the candles out of order. It's like, ah, it's, <laughs> it's fine. It's what it is. Um, and just the things that it's like, the, the I guess, it almost puts their priorities in the right place because they're not focused on the ceremony of it as much as the actual meaning behind everything. Mm-hmm. Um, unless anyone has another quote they'd really love to share. I'll wrap it up with one more. Go for it. Okay. So I think if you were to sum up the theme of the whole book in one sentence, it would be this one. Somehow Advent is the indwelling of hope from carnage, the blooming of possibility from scorched earth. Had that one on my list too. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Okay. Um, what biblical and theological themes stood out to you? I mean, pretty much the entire thing, just hope and despair. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you have to really root that hope in, in your own faith. It's just it's hard to, to see the the hope in everything, but when you have that faith on those cloudy cloudy nights, a lot of warmer mornings coming, you know, that's what our faith is for, and that hope and despair is just a kind of recurring thing, especially because, yeah, that kind of the situation the author's in and in his writing this is, it's all it is, but yeah, I like as as Janine said at the start, like I was still found myself being very hopeful throughout those chapters and just especially like because the what's so crazy is like most of the time when we lose someone it's suddenly whereas he had to live that and watch it come. Mm -hmm. I'll say for me, the, the major thing that came to mind was the idea of, um, and it kind of builds on what we've said throughout this, but that idea of hope through exile. Um, and so like we all know like Jeremiah 29, 11, that kind of thing. Um, but people don't really know Jeremiah 29, 10 or 12. And so um, like that was kind of the, the thing that I connected with is that idea of like, there's, there's hope, but that hope is, is not always promised to be immediate. And it might not even be hope for you. Like it might be hope that based on um, the faith, based on um, the things going on, that others can come to know God better. Not that, um, not that it's going to be easy for you. And I, I really connected with that. And I, that was something that kind of stood out to me in that like, um, from like a storyteller perspective, we always want to be the main character um, but there's, there, except for Chris, everyone but Chris wants to be the main character. Um, but the majority of the time that, that we're not, like, that's just not how it works. Um, and I kind of connected with it through, through that sense of saying like, and again, like it's going to the blue, like jazz, like this, the story doesn't resolve. Like I remember leaving hopeful. And before we started, I went back and read the last day and I was like, why did I leave hopeful? Like that kind of thing. Um, because it, it definitely doesn't resolve in that sense, but it, it left me feeling feeling that hope that there was there's an end to the exile, that kind of thing. There, in the grand scheme of things, there is, because as Christians, we believe that one day, like God and Jesus are, are coming back to bring us all to heaven. Mm -hmm. So there is, eventually like there is hope in the in the extent like there is hope in death even though death is pain and suffering and like losing loved ones mm -hmm. yeah i really love evan's theology of suffering um just acknowledging that suffering happens and not trying to deny it not trying to blame anyone or anything for it but just acknowledging that this is the world that we live in and it's going to happen mm -hmm. um and that it's okay to provide space to experience the pain and not have false hope or false faith as you walk through it but knowing where your hope lies and that it's in jesus in that resurrection day when everything will be made right mm -hmm.
Okay, is there anything else that stood out to you from the book? I guess maybe more on like a shallow thing. I liked the art. I like the little pictures that are on <laughs> some of the days. Like again, like I, I feel like we just got really heavy and now I'm pulling it the other way. Um, but like, I really enjoyed those. I enjoyed the, like both the simplicity of them, but also the, um, like their ability to communicate tone. And so like, like even going back to, to December 1st, sorry, I just heard something on my window. Um, even like going back to that very first one, that's one of, that's the, one of the first illustrations and it has that idea, that flame, that reaching for the fire. And I just enjoyed those. And I thought that those were really good, like um, kind of fitting with the, the overall tone of like, they're not heavy handed. Um, and they're very much like, like good art is it's letting you interpret what you want to interpret from it. What you, what do you, what you, you get what the artist is trying to get you to feel, but then it's open up to, to kind of dwell on, to reflect on and see what it means for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shout out to their friend, Nikayla O'Neill for doing the illustrations in the book. Michaela, and to <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Evan's wife, Rachel, did the cover picture, so. Yeah. Okay, so how does this compare to other Advent resources you've read or whatnot? <laughs> I feel like that's been asked and answered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll I'll say for me, I think the only other like real Advent thing I've gone through has been like the U version Advent thing, which is very like it's good. Still, of course, don't want to knock like that either. But it's it's very it. what kind of it's very <laughs> like. You version. Um, our email is one st peak four one one at gmail.com. Um, and um, and um, and so like kind of with that like that it's a very typical I guess is the best way to say that and um, and this is very not um, and so yeah. um, so in that case yeah I guess kind of as Chris said we've um, it's very different than than what I'm was expecting and what is normal. I think for Advent stuff didn't come with chocolates and little yes. behind little box doors yes. <laughs> <laughs> or towards what Deanna posted in chat doesn't come with Legos. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've done some Advent studies on she reads truth, which are usually very good. Um, they often focus on like the waiting aspect and things like that. Um, and I've also read The Advent of the Lamb of God by Russ Ramsey, which is also an excellent Advent book, which I recommend. But yeah, all the other Advent resources I've ever read are very Christmas focused and like talking about the Christmas story and like the shepherds and the wise men and Mary and Joseph and Jesus and Yeah, like not that Jesus wasn't in this book, but just in a very different, not like yep. happy Jesus in the manger kind of way. Yeah, I feel like Advent is usually more like fun and <laughs> happy. Like they really focus on the joy part of it. Yeah. And um, this might just be me, um, and this will kind of tie in with the next question too, to an extent of, do Advent things usually end on December 24th or do they go to the 25th? They end on the 24th. Okay, that is typical, okay. Technically, like in the time frame specifically is November 29th, traditionally through the 24th. Hmm. It's a longer hmm. period. It's like, at least like in, I think four like, Sundays away from right. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll say for me that like, that was one of the things that like, I mean, I guess it's typical, but I just didn't know. Um, but like, 
Uh, and this kind of plays off what you just said, Shanine, where it's like, there's not a lot of Jesus in this. There's a good amount of Jesus, but like you don't get to December 25th. Um, and like I said, I, I, when I was going through it, I thought that was an artistic choice and I found that really interesting, but I guess they're just doing what's normal. Um, but, um, but yeah, so like that was one of those things that like, again, I thought was really interesting that there's, I guess there just isn't that 25th. There isn't that day. Because the expectation and waiting is done on the 25th. Yeah. There's no more Advent at that point, though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which I do love that about Evan in general and this book as well, is that I feel like he's kind of always living in Advent and pointing toward like the second Advent. So I think it does make sense not to have like the 25th and the waiting's over. Mm -hmm. Like, um, okay, fine, I'll read it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Being> convinced herself. <laughs> um, this is Advent. The waiting and morning time. Our whole being, up until Resurrection Day, occurs in the waiting room of his three days in Jonah's big fish. So, like, yes, we do have this season of Advent every year, but we're also kind of just living in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay do you guys typically observe advent and what do you do calendars <laughs> get a I'll chocolate every day <laughs> i like the ones with socks now <laughs> Like, not, like, not actively. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily observe it in, in, in the sense that, you know, church would prepare you to observe it. And I'll say sim similarly, similar to me. Um, there's definitely been that, like, like, church structure getting into Christmas, getting into that, but, um, like, I don't necessarily think we ever, like, talked about it being Advent. It was more of the, like, here are the Sundays as we lead up to Christmas, that kind of thing. Um, and it, yeah. And so it, you do your, like, and again, very kind of very typical. You would look at the, uh, like, that longer sto look at the story of the birth of Christ, where you might do um, just different sections based on leading up divided up so that you hit it hit the birth part of the birth story on christmas day um but that's not like we never really called like i said called that advent yeah up until i'd like to think i observe advent oh go ahead <laughs> I, i'd like to think that i celebrate it or observe it to the best of my ability every year and that in the past has looked different every year um or it has just looked different in even if it's in little ways or big ways so i try to say the least Yeah, like I've definitely done the chocolate calendar and um, <laughs> up until this point, I have not been attending a liturgical church, which I'm kind of sad to be missing out on the Advent season with the church that I was attending. But um, so I don't really know Advent from like a liturgical point of view, I guess. But the churches that I did attend, they'd like 
light the candle on Sunday and we'd sing Christmas carols and like talk about Christmas and stuff for all of the Sundays of Advent. And I do remember having an Advent wreath at one point in my childhood at home where we would also light the candles at night and like I'm sure my mom would read something but I don't remember much else beyond that like Advent was just like it's almost Christmas time Mm -hmm. right and not like it's actual like Advent time Um, any other thoughts on how this book compares with typical Christmas preparations? Nope. <laughs> I, think, I think we said it all. Like I just, I'm trying to think if I had anything else to add. Yeah. It's very different. Yeah. Okay. How does suffering fit in with celebration? You can't really have one without the other. Like, you can't celebrate if you don't know the experience of suffering. And you can't experience suffering if you don't know or have ever experienced true celebration. At least in my experience. Totally agree on that. chat Deanna says it's like inside out (laughs) yeah Yeah. yes (laughs) which yeah I mean I I, I think that's an awesome example like um, she says you can't have real joy without sadness and I think Mm -hmm. that um I I think somebody said earlier that idea of like um of emotion and and maybe this was part of our Monday conversation for Sony buying pure flicks that people can find on our social on our YouTube um but that idea of like um, Christian faith doesn't always have this nice bow wrapped up on it. And I think that sometimes we, as a, as a larger church kind of have that expectation of the, everything's fine. Um, And you come in and you smile and you're happy and you greet people. And that's how you're supposed to be as a Christian. Um, And I feel like a lot of times we, we don't do great at letting that, that suffering side be able to be there. Because it's typically not fun to talk about. So we typically try to avoid it instead of allowing the normal things to be there. Yeah, like I think having those two things in our lives, like Emma said, allows us to experience the other to a deeper level, but also like they can exist simultaneously and mm-hmm. whether it's one person experiencing one next to another person experiencing the other or myself experiencing them both at the same time, like mm-hmm. they seem contradictory, but they're not actually mutually exclusive. Mm-hmm. I think communities in general are more comfortable with the celebration side of things. Mm -hmm. The suffering's harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that it's like, it's hard to, it's hard to know what to say or what not to say. I guess that's the, and and I think that because of that, there's a tendency for people to like lean on the cliches, um, which often don't really help. 
but it's that like I think a lot of times in that suffering people feel the need to like well I need to be here and I can't just sit like um, you need to, I kind of feel like I just have to say something so I'm going to say heaven needed another angel which is you know not great theology and also not helpful um, or not typically helpful obviously everybody teach their own might be helpful to one person but um, in general it is not um, and 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 so I think because of that discomfort it, it's just so easy just to say it's a time that we party and even if it's um, we kind of just don't think about it that kind of thing or try to not think about it yeah I think, yeah, we're not good at bringing suffering into our spaces. But suffering is so much harder alone. Mm -hmm. Um, so on that note, how can we care for those who are suffering during Advent 2020? And I was kind of mm. dreading us getting to this point when I was like looking at the like looking ahead. Because <laughs> uh, like I feel like all of my answers are 2019 answers. Um, <laughs> and so like I know for me, um, like for people that might not know, like I moved to Connecticut um, to be a youth minister and like didn't know anyone that wasn't at the church and all that stuff. And so um, one of the ways that people were very like supportive of me was just the having people over for dinner. It was, I was very much a young 20 something that didn't have family in the area. Didn't, I was trying to build friend groups, but that was something that the church there did to, to help me. But in 2020, that's that gets a bit harder um especially with like obviously zoom's not nearly the same and zoom fatigue and all that kind of stuff and but yeah so i don't know drop off wine <laughs> <laughs> did you just say rip off wine no drop off wine Oh, I heard, I heard rip off wine, and I was just like, "What is rip off wine? You just go and steal other people's wine and put your own label on it." <laughs> it's called counterfeiting, and that's very yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. In tw yeah, like as Cameron's saying, 2020 is a little different, but I mean, being available still, like mm -hmm. being sensitive to to those cues um, and honestly, pres just being like having, even if it is just a digital presence, like being available and present and making sure that they feel heard without trying to interject more of your stuff into what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. The main theme of Job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, the part of Job that we typically skip. But yeah. <laughs> The part where the friends started talking and they got everything wrong. That part. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine until you opened your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the big thing is to invite people who are suffering into your spaces. And our spaces are definitely looking different this mm -hmm. year. And so it's not necessarily physical space but or close space but you all are welcome in our chat <laughs> know that yes <laughs> and yeah I think being intentional with reaching out 
-hmm. whether you're the one Mm -hmm. suffering and you need support or you know someone suffering who needs support just reach out for what you need and give what you can offer to fold their laundry if possible (laughs) (laughs) i will take anyone up on that (laughs) seriously (laughs) <laughs> my laundry lives in a basket <laughs> it goes from washer to dryer to basket to on me to washer to dryer the basket <laughs> yeah <I> hate laundry <laughs> sorry <laughs> exactly that's the point <laughs> Offer to do someone's laundry. (laughs) (laughs) It's a big ask. (laughs) (laughs) No, but true though. Not necessarily laundry, but there can be other things. It it could be. (laughs) It could be laundry. It could be running some errands or. Yeah. Find find a need and fill it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you read another book by this author? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, I'm a big like fan I'm... of the Welchers, so I kind of just read anything they put out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely interested in looking at what all else they have and and seeing. I'm I'm kind of interested in something more long form rather than mm-hmm. uh, and just kind of seeing that what that process looks like that style how it carries over to long, like larger chunks of thought I guess for lack of a better way to say it but. yeah I'll probably be saying get out of my head a lot <laughs> <laughs> it's like you didn't need to at me <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and our last fun question to close it out. What are you most looking forward to during Advent this year? Sleep. (laughs) Since I work for a school district, I get a whole month off. So sleepy. (laughs) If that counts. It counts. (laughs) There are no rules. Fine. (laughs) It's like a top three. Yeah, exactly. There are no, there are no rules until I establish them. No, no. <laughs> no rules because we don't. Yeah, because I, I don't oh. establish rules. Because then I'll break it like the next second. <laughs> yeah. You know, I said this is a rule, but I'm gonna break it in the next sentence. NDM. I don't know. Um, My birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll say for me, like I, don't, I just don't, I don't really know what I'm looking forward to this year with it. Um, not that there's anything I'm not looking forward to by any means, but like, it's it's one of those that, um, and, and like I'll say after moving back to Texas, like, Christmassy things feel a lot different when it's like 65. Um, <laughs> when it, yeah. Like, and so like, and and obviously like the point of Advent isn't like the winter time, but like it definitely feels a bit weird coming back to, to Texas for the, for the Advent season. Um, and yeah, so like, I don't, I just don't, I don't have a good answer. Check back to our podcast. And <laughs> we're, we're in a whole different kind of Advent <laughs> this year. It's all mm-hmm. about waiting for that vaccine, <laughs> mm-hmm. waiting for things to get back to normal and hopefully it happens. Um, but I don't know. I'm excited to just kind of because I know um, my sister and her new husband will be visiting. So I'm excited to just be with my family. Mm-hmm. Like have everyone together and play with my nephew. 
in chat Deanna says Legos and Christmas movies <laughs> yes I mean for me I feel like the last several years Christmas as an adult have just felt super different and not like that typical like Christmassy feeling um and I feel like this advent is going to be even more of that but I'm still looking forward to it I don't know I'm just I'm looking forward to the whole season mm -hmm. alpines that's what I'm looking forward to <laughs> I like turkey dinner, so stuffing, I guess. Mm. <laughs> I'm very much a Jesse Carey opinion on turkey. For those who have been keeping up with the relevant podcast. I don't know who that is or what their opinion is. <laughs> I feel like I disagree, though. <laughs> Whatever it is, I disagree. <laughs> Whatever yeah. it is. You might, you might disagree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in chat, Deanna says, I think just being great, um, thankful that we've made it through the year without losing anyone close. Like, yeah. And that they're smart people that can make vaccines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that one. Although it's still a freaking injection. What's go where's that technology? Come on, people. Don't what? like shots. Don't like shots. Oh. <laughs> I, I came healed to be healed and not to be stabbed. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> it's like, how is this still the primary? But we have to stab you to heal you. That's Why how this, this works, right? <laughs> how is this the primary how is this still the primary administration method of vaccines? To be <laughs> healed, you be must be way. stabbed. Okay, any closing thoughts on the book? No, I definitely recommend it. You know, everyone get mm -hmm. your copy before December 1st. Mm -hmm. um, completely agree. And I also want to say, Shanine, shout out to you for putting these questions together. Mm -hmm. um, I think this was an awesome, I mean, all of our book clubs have been awesome. I don't mean to like accidentally throw the other ones un under the bus. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to do, but I, I just want to say great job putting these together. I like, um, it's, it felt really good to have for me to have this conversation and it, I, I just want to say thank you for putting that together. Thanks. Okay, so I just want to let everyone know that the author Evan Welcher and his wife Rachel Welcher, as well as some others on Twitter, will be reading through the book in December and posting their own daily reflections on there, and that is open for participation. So if you want to do that, go follow them on Twitter. And we'll try to put their social media um, in show notes and stuff like that and have that for people. So, um, yes. so we can, um, and I know it's in our social media posts. We tagged it already, but um, we'll try to get that in show notes so that, like I said, so people can find it and follow them. Yes. That is Evan Welcher and Rachel Joy Welcher. So. Well, if you follow Shanine, they'll be easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I basically retweet them, and that's what my Twitter is. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next book club is on December 17th, and Chris, you want to tell us about what we're going to be reading? We are going to be reading The Father Christmas Letters by Mr. J.R.R. Tolkien, and I'm super excited for this. Um, essentially, these these weren't and none of these were actually made to be published. He didn't write these as a book or anything. These were actually later compiled. These are actual letters he wrote to his children year after year as they were growing up as Father Christmas and his polar bear and elf buddies 
and they're phenomenal. And I'm so excited to discuss these with you and pick out some of our favorite stories. Um, yeah, I this is going to be great. And there's multiple iterations. Originally, they compiled them. They've revised and added some additional letters um, later, uh, later um, as well. Uh, and yeah, I'm just excited to discuss something, some Tolkien. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm. I'm excited for this one. Oh. Our fourth book club book. It's about time we get to Tolkien. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I mean, we, we could, could do understatement of the, of the right century. <laughs> <laughs> book club on Tolkien for the rest of the existence of this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Chris, I think it's time that we do a, a spin off series where you can do Tolkien. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough podcasts out there. I just, like, <laughs> I'll be happy just to guest on one of them. How about that? <laughs> yeah. One day. One day. Okay. And I did find a free PDF online of Letters from Father Christmas. So I can post the link to that in our Discord after as well. Awesome. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, we'll also probably share some links if you want to buy it or if you already own it, let us know. Um, there's so many publications of this that there's some interesting differences too. So I'd be interested to see if we all get, get different copies, exactly what's different between them. Yeah. Or you can be like me with the Sherlock Holmes and go to Half Price Books the week after we finish our book club and then find all the cool collections now that we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you still bought them. Mm, we've already read it. Oh, come on. We didn't read all of it. <laughs> There's other stories in those That's collections. no excuse not to buy a cool collection. <laughs> Gotta fill half up that price. bookcase. <laughs> yeah. You, you said half price. Yeah, yeah, you said half price, I right? don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I guess <laughs> Cameron's not the bibliophile. Obviously not the bibliophile in the group. No, <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> Where it's like <laughs> the rest of us, however, <laughs> have price books. It's like I, I know I already own this, but this is a different publication. But it's so pretty, <laughs> and I really like this forward in this one. I think I'm gonna buy it, <laughs> and it's half price. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop buying books. <laughs> All right, so again. Advent, A Thread in the Night by E.M. Welcher. Go buy it. Um, we are First Geek 411 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Join our Discord and come chat with us. Email us at 1stgeek411 at gmail.com. Watch us live on Twitch on Monday nights and find us on YouTube as well. Rate and subscribe on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Check out the show notes on our website, onegeek411.com, and check out our sister podcast, Faith, Trust, and Pixie Dust. I'm Shanine at Hoot and Howl Tales, T A L E S, on Instagram, and The Hoot and Howl on Twitter. I am, I am not prepared with an eye on pretty much every platform of medias. I'm Huma Whittle. And I'm not so foreign. Wash your hands. Bill, I love you. Read a book. I like it. <laughs>